video is about can open devices and how they can be implemented using the MCU Expresso SDK from NXP, which already comes with a can open library provided by us. We use an NXP evaluation board with CAN connectors installed and we use a PCAN USB interface. This interface allows us to monitor the bus and look at the traffic produced. Let's have a look at the available resources online. Let's go to em-sa.com slash nxp. That is our main entry page for the MCU Expresso SDK support and other tools we have for NXP semiconductors microcontrollers. So if we scroll down here, then one of the first things you please need to download is the Can Open Architect Mini EDS Editor. EDS stands for Electronic Data Sheet, and that is the specification of Can Open devices. Uh, the Electronic Data Sheet contains the object dictionary, so all the objects, the parameters that are communicated and that are required to configure a can open node. This editor helps you setting up a custom device. Then here we have a link to the manual. You can download that and have a look at that. And here is the link to the MCU Expresso NXP SDK download. If you do not yet have a login to the MCU Expresso SDK Builder web page, you need to generate one. Once you're logged in, you can go to Select Boards, Boards, LPC, and uh, the board I'm using here is a 54628, so that's all the way down here. And then we can already select Build the MCU Expresso SDK for this. On the next page, you can customize your software development kit. You can select the tool chain that you want to support. I'll just go here with the MCU Expresso IDE, but you could also use IR, Kyle, or simply say you want everything. So just let's use the MCU Expresso. And then here are all the options that you can include and the examples, demos, drivers, and down here you'll see can open middleware, can open stack, micro can open plus. So for this demo, we surely need that. We do not use anything else here, but um, it's a good idea to keep some of the basic libraries in here, but um, uh, keep the debugging tool in here and nothing else. Nope, that's it. Oh, let's just see where's the button down here, download. SDK. This now generates the software development kit as I configured it. So it takes a little bit until it's completed. While you're waiting that your software development kit gets generated, you might want to download the MCU Expresso IDE here to get the latest version. Once the generation is completed in your SDK dashboard, it will show up and there's another download link here. After clicking that, you'll have to answer some end user license agreements. But once you accepted everything, you can download a zip file with the entire software development kit. After installing the IDE, the Can Open Architect Mini, and getting your SDK, installing the SDK into your current workspace is quite easy. There's drag and drop. Simply take the zip file. So everything down here and say we want to install it. So that shows up down here in the installed SDKs. Down here on the left you see import SDK examples. So with your current SDK selected, click on examples, import, and then select the board. In this case, we use and import the can open examples. The examples are here in the left in our project window. And now let's have a look at the micro can open slave example and where the configuration is. So the micro can open configuration is down here. There's an EDS directory, the electronic data sheet, and this is 
where our can open configuration is. So here are the so-called EDS file, the electronic data shield, and the files used by the can open architect. Let's have a look at that. Let's now use can open architect mini to generate our own custom configuration of a can open node. So file open project it defaulted to the last one I selected, but we are again in our NXP workspace. The slave example MCO config EDS. This is where the configuration is. And if we now look at the configurations available in a can open node, then one of the first things we need to do is we need to double check the node ID that we are using. So this device in commissioning should have the node ID Let's use seven. I'm just gonna make sure we have something else than the default in here so that we see our changes became active. And here is the object dictionary, which is separated in several sections. The communication profile has all the can open specific communication parameters and settings like the device type where we have the 191 is our generic I.O. device, so we remain a generic I.O. device, but there's also an area here, um, a string for a manufacturer device name. So let's definitely change that so that later we see that our own text is um, provided here. My test device, my first test device. And uh, things you would typically change are also things like your identity object. This is where your vendor ID, product code number, revision number are inserted. But there's also a manufacturer specific area. And here you can add your own communication parameters, um, uh, the parameters you want to communicate. So I'll say new entry and I'll place one here at 2200 as an index. The 2000 area is reserved for manufacturer specific parameters. So let's call this my variable add. And we make this, let's say, we'll use an unsigned 16 and we'll make this a read write parameter. Maybe select the default 0x1234. So that should be enough for a first start. So let's export our C source code. Right mouse click, export micro can open sources. As target directory, make sure we use the same EDS directory that is pre-selected, fine, okay. And there are already files there present. We will overwrite them. And now we exported our new configuration. I'll also save this file just for later use. Now let's set up the hardware. I have a UART cable, regular DB9 connectors. I have one termination resistor for CAN, because on this board there already is one termination resistor, so I just need one on the other end. And to make things match here, I use a gender changer. So one termination resistor end goes to one end of the network, which is my peak CAN interface here. So that's plugged in together. And here I need the gender changer. So that goes in here. And we use the upper connector. On the USB connectors available on the board, it's the one down here that has the debug port. There are various tools available to monitor and analyze CAN or CAN Open Networks. I have here CAN Open Magic. And the first step we need to do is to connect it to a network. So network connect. And here we select the CAN interface that we are using. I have a peak system PCAN USB FD. And the bitrate used for all these demos is 500 kilobits. So we have a 500 kilobit network selected. 
in the MCU Expresso IDE, we can now download and start our code. So I'll simply go here on run, debug as, go to the MCU Expresso link server. This now downloads the code and sets up here at the beginning of the main function. For now, I'll simply hit running. So let's run this. To activate trace recording of all messages, I just have to press the start button. And now when the board starts, we actually see the boot up message and an emergency reset or no error message. So there's no further errors. And then we see a one second heartbeat coming out of the device. It's node ID seven. So this is already the number we previously configured. Now we can also perform so-called SDO read or write accesses. So here I'm reading node ID seven. The entry is the manufacturer device name. Remember this is the string we edited. And so when I do a read here and I'll stop the trace so that we see what went on, you can see there's the data, my first test device. And we can see that there was a read to the manufacturer device name. There was a response that uh, it needs to be fragmented. And then there's a series of fragments or segments going over the bus, each having up to seven bytes of data from this object dictionary entry. Another one we have is over here, the 2200. Remember the specific new object we generated. So if I continue recording here and do a read here, then we can also see that the data returned is one, two, three, four, just as we specified. So that also went over the bus. It shows here as three, four, one, two. This is because the endianness of the communication is little endian. So the least significant byte always comes first. Let's modify the code a bit and work with the variable we created. Earlier we created a new variable and uh, this is the symbol name generated for the code. So this is what we can start using. Let's look at the main function, how can open is integrated here. So this is the main function. And uh, one of the first functions in regards to can open is the initialization of the can open stack. And this is done here by reset communication. So the MCO micro can open user function reset communication initializes and reinitializes the entire can and can open communication. And another important function is the MCO process stack. This function must be called regularly to simply keep the can open stack and up and running. So here in our while one background loop, there's no real time operating system here. We simply keep calling this function. Another function called is the user process. And this is only called is when our own network management state is operational. So if we are operational, then we start the user process. And this user process works with all the inputs and outputs. There's a little demo implementation here and I added the following test. I want to change the variable at 2200 that we generated depending on what gets written to it. It's a read write variable and um, this has no specific meaning here. I just want to make sure that we see how it works. So we read the data that is at this location. So read process data and um, it's a 16 bit value. And here is the index, the offset that we are using to address it. So this variable gets written to analog in. And now we say if this analog input is one, two, three, four, then we set it to five, 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 five. If it is five, six, seven, eight, then we set it to a, 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 a. And then we need to write it back to the process image of the can open stack that happens here. So analog in two bytes is written back to write process data to the process image of the can open stack. Let's compile and build. So we'll go to 
slave say build project that was already completed so that was fast and let's start using it run debug as mcu expresso downloading to the board now um, for the beginning let's simply start running Okay, now we can look at our can open magic screen, see if this example is running. So here we already see the heartbeat again, it's pre-operational. And if we read the variable, do a read here, then the current value one, two, three, four is still there. Yes, it's still pre-operational. We are not yet in operational mode. Now let's switch the device into operational mode. We can send a network management message and simply say switch to operational. And as you can see, the node is now communicating a lot of PDOs here. I can change that to fixed. So this way we see the display of each message as it comes in. And uh, if we now read again, now it's operational. Sure enough, it changed to 5555 because that is what our code did when it detected that it's 1234. It's actually changing it to 5555. And now we can do the other part of this test. If we write 5678, it should be set all to AAs. So if we do a write now, so we wrote the data. Now let's read it back and do another read. And look at that, it's AAAA. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to check out our other videos.